Hey y'all, welcome back. This week we'll get our anchor set back in Georgetown, where an old friend Lance now is. After being moved around the boat, tossed and turned for no less than eight years, Lance will help me turn the tangled mess that's my spinnaker into a giant sail that will be my go-to for future downwind sails. After getting some more volleyball and dancing in, we'll hunker down for what's a sailor's worst nightmare while at anchor, a massive lightning storm. Finally, we'll really immerse ourselves into the more local Bahamian lifestyle. So join me on this wonderful adventure, and don't forget to live your dream. So I'm Amy, a Midwestern Canton girl, and this is my boat, Maritopia. After moving to Florida in 2020, buying a $5,000 Facebook Marketplace worn out 1973 Pearson sailboat and spending two years endlessly working on her, I quit my job and have started my solo sailing adventures with the goal to truly immerse myself into as many different cultures as possible. I hope you're able to enjoy the videos as much as I do living the experiences. Picking up where we left off last week, it's now time to turn west and go into the Georgetown Harbor. The winds have died off quite a bit, so it's also time to pull the main sail down. It's a big old boat. It is ICS Orion. Carrying just an excavator, it looks like. I've got the motor on. Uh, the winds aren't really strong enough to, to keep us on course. As I get closer to shore, I'm reminded of the full force that the sea can have. It's sights like this that as a solo sailor constantly keep the complacency in check. Yeah, we're definitely back in Georgetown with all these boats. But there's a lot of stuff to do here, so. I'll enjoy being back here. Uh, it was fun getting out of here, but uh, I guess there's a concert tonight and tomorrow night. That sounds like fun. Have some clicks with my friends that are here. That sounds like fun. Yeah. That's a cool boat. Wow, that's awesome. Buried in with all of these newer boats that are just pumped out of factories. And then you have that super cool thing. I don't know what it is, but it's some sort of schooner. Just pulled in in Georgetown <clears throat> and there's a familiar boat. That is Lance Tinkerman. And uh, that is the Pearson catch that I helped him sail to Mexico with trout in October of last year. So I'm gonna go say hi to Lance. I haven't seen him for what, five or six months? Hey, yo, grumpy f So I've had a couple of sail bags on the boat uh, down in the port side lazarette for a while. Well, since I bought the boat. And I was under the impression that I had a spare mainsail and a spare headsail. So I opened the bag a while back and come to find out I have a spinnaker. And it's in the sock. So that is awfully convenient. Uh, I'm looking at it. Uh, the tack and the clue are identical. So it's a symmetrical spinnaker. Uh, I've never flown one on this boat, let alone alone. In fact, I've only flown a spinnaker one time before ever on Lance's boat, and that was in Gulfport. Uh, and Lance happens to be here in uh, Georgetown now, so he's gonna come over and help me 
pick this thing up and uh, fly it this afternoon. In great condition, so here we go. The Lantern. Pull that and pull the sock up. Pull this and pull the sock down. Lantern, all his infinite wisdom is teaching, <laughs> teaching me how to use this to set the spinnaker up and rig it. Double here, twist. Sure, we're raising the spinnaker for the very first time, but we would very quickly realize what a mess it was inside of the sock. The sock is the white cover that's around the spinnaker itself. It raises and lowers around the spinnaker in order to make it much easier to manage getting the spinnaker out and back in. It was right about here that we started realizing how tangled it really was. The line and pulling on should have very easily been raising the sock and letting the spinnaker unfurl. But inside of the sock, the sock lines were tangled around the spinnaker. We had the anchor up with the engine pushing us at just an idle. With it being such a busy anchorage, I had to keep going back to the helm in order to make small adjustments to the autopilot. Yeah, sorry, I wanted to give them room. With the wind blowing the spinnaker around, Lance had me lower it back down to the deck so that it was easier to untangle the mess. Thinking we'd gotten it all straightened out, back up it went for attempt number two. After finally getting the sock lines mostly untangled, we raised the spinnaker again. But once raising the sock, it became obvious how the spinnaker itself was twisted. In order to make it far more manageable, we pulled the sock back down around the spinnaker so that it wasn't catching wind. This would have been far easier had I taken it to the beach ahead of time in order to properly straighten it out. But, well, I've always been good at learning the hard way. We're not quite there yet, but with each time when we raise the sock, it's slowly getting sorted. And there it is, and all it's... Wait, what? I have a devil's head on my kite? Eh, I'll work on processing that later. For now, with a few minor adjustments, Maritopia is moving under nothing other than the spinnaker power. For inexperienced me, it was a sight to see. Knowing that I had another capable sailing tool in my chest was a wonderful feeling. I've still got some untangling to do at the very top. But there it is in all its glory. And I was as giddy as a school kid. Lance is the one back here doing all the work. Five and a half. Five and a half, ten knots away. Lance is busting his butt to get this set right. Yeah, I'm on. While going directly downwind, five and a half knots of boat speed and ten knots of wind is pretty darn amazing. And this was without the spinnaker being entirely unfurled and before Lance teaches me how to properly adjust it. Doing 
doing five and a half knots, five, five and a half knots and 13 and a half or so knots of wind. Say so that's pretty damn good. After a day full of learning and finally reaching success, it was time for some fun on land. And there's no better place than the gold standard of chat and chill. Okay. Oh, who's this Yahoo I have in front of me? What's your name? Trump. What's Trump? This? That's your real name? No. <laughs> After getting some exercise in by playing volleyball, followed by a great time dancing, it would be time to hunker down on the boat for a few days while a storm blows through. got a, a windstorm that's blowing through. It's supposed to be here today uh, through the next two or three days. We'll use this time to do some YouTube editing. Here's my little editing station. I'm actually uploading a video right now. Second monitor, my iPad. Which, now that I'm doing everything on the laptop, I only use the iPad uh, to type up the voiceovers. And eventually, I'll get a microphone to hook into the uh, computer so that the voiceovers can get much better. It's the first storm that Rocking and rolling. Oh, here comes the rain. The dinghy's back there loving life. Early that evening, Mother Nature really opened the skies up on us. The VHF radio was non stop as boats in the anchorage were being struck by lightning. <laughs> While anchored, there are a few things that sailors fear more than lightning. While people and companies have come up with various gadgets over the years, there are little to no tools that are scientifically proven to deter lightning. Starlink is an amazing product that has completely changed the game for cruisers. However, the one kryptonite it has is heavy rain. With rain and lightning surrounding us, I shut off all electronics and basically crossed my fingers that Mother Nature considered me a friend today. Oh, I've got the dinghy up during this storm and it's angled down in the back. I've got the plug out so that I shouldn't have to use the bilge pump to pump it out tomorrow. That's super convenient. Love it. The lightning kept getting more intense as the evening pushed in tonight. And then, as fast as it had moved in, it was an eerily calm night. In all, six boats in the anchorage got struck by lightning. Not always, but generally lightning strikes cause almost all electrical components on board to fry. So those boats would unfortunately have a long road ahead of them before moving on. After being confined to the boat for three days straight, and with the storm now passed, it was time to find a remedy for my cabin fever. Yeah, 
under the bridge I just went through is what's called Lake Victoria. It's a very protected area where most of the public facilities can be accessed. Here's the dinghy dock, which is surprisingly not busy this day. It's free to tie your dinghy up. As well, there's free access to drinking water. Only a short walk away, we would find a locals hangout, where we would end up spending the vast majority of the day socializing and playing games with some wonderful Bahamians. There was a small group already playing, but it didn't take us long to join in. We're playing Mexican dominoes, which is nearly identical to the standard, just a bit faster pace. Whoever came in last in a round gave up their seat for the next person in line. And it was generally me that came in last place. The locals that we were playing dominoes with recommended a place to eat, so we walked a bit further down the road. And dang were they right. It was delicious. Hey, Mama. Welcome. Hey, Hello, Hello. Barbecue chicken, fries. Uh, where's your sides? You have, you have corn? And there's some more corn. All right, barbecue chicken and fries. I'll get no problem. You have mac and cheese? See how he tells me that they're out of both corn and mac and cheese for sides? This is normal for the Bahamas. The restaurants buy what they think they'll need for the day. Once they're out, they're out, and they won't have more until the following day. You're looking all pretty. <laughs> Thank you. Are you in high school? Yes, Mom. Is, so that you you wear a uniform? Yeah. Well, it's a prefect uniform. It's what? The prefect uniform. What's that? It's your grade, right? Okay, the word prefect is an autogram for the word perfect, and we are student leaders. Oh, ah, cool. oh, so cool. you're yeah. Like, yeah. <laughs> like an honest student. Yeah. Good for yeah, you. Cool, yeah. cool. cool. Okay, yeah. 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 Give me one of them before you fall. Once done eating, we would walk back down to where we were before. Now that we were back, they were playing a version of craps. As much as they kept inviting me to play, and as much as I really wanted to, they were moving entirely too fast for me to feel comfortable betting money. But what a great day it was, spending it with great friends and really diving into a very small piece of the Bahamian culture. If you'd like to stay up to date and follow along with the adventures, please be sure to like, comment, and subscribe to the channel. Next week, we'll make a short passage north in the gnarliest sustained seas I've ever sailed in, all in the name of spearfishing, which I have my best day yet, spearing a grouper and a queen trigger. After a wonderful few days, it's time to hightail it back to Georgetown in order to renew my cruising permit and visa.